Rose Lily Violet Lindemann was born in Isabel, South Dakota, near the Lakota Indian Tribe Reservation in 1913. She had three brothers, Walter William Frederick Lindemann, Willard Ernest Jacob Lindemann, and Arthur William Frederick Lindemann. And Violet Mildred Mabel Lindemann was her sister. Many of the names obviously came from relatives. Mom learned many of life's hard lessons when they moved to a farm outside of Lake Benton, Minnesota, where she attended a one-room school. But when they moved to town, she just couldn't finish high school because of the ridicule she had received about her clothes. And a real knight in shining armor, Herman Christensen rode his horse from Tyler to Lake Benton one day. And he saw Rose. Herman whistled, and then it began. We found over 50 love letters over the next two years from dad to mom. They worked to raise enough money for their marriage and to buy her wedding dress at the SNL store for $3.98, which we have preserved. They eloped to St. Peter, Minnesota with her two brothers as attendants, where her Aunt Rose's husband, the Reverend Charles Baxter, provided the wedding nuptials. And now, she was Rose Lily Violet Lindemann Christensen. When they arrived back in Tyler, Dad's parents, Anton and Anna Christine, greeted them with, Welcome, Mr. and Mrs. Christensen. How did they know? And then Dad told her. He said he took them to Arco to get the wedding license and that they had to loan him the money to buy the suit. So Tyler, Minnesota became her home, living across the street from the Christensen's until Anna Christine passed away in 1934. And then they moved to the Christensen house to attend to Anton's needs. After he died in 1938, they made many, many improvements to the house. Well, who was my mother? She played on the Tyler ladies baseball team in 1933. She was secretary treasurer of the first English Lutheran Sunday School. She was president of the women's circles, ladies aides, and she created many of the Danish Christmas for the Christmas trees at the church. She was on the Girl Scout Council, the Cub Scouts, the PTA, reading circles, the Mother's Club, Hospital Auxiliary, ALCW, and many, many other organizations. But she never forgot to include her parents and relatives in on the holidays. And when in the middle of building her family, my dad was promoted and the whole family were sent to Barnum, Minnesota, across the state to run Maplewood Poultry Farm. And she stepped up again, sharing and volunteering in the church and in the community. But about four to five years later, the whole family came back to Tyler to begin again. And so she began by expanding her passion for baking. She built a business around catering weddings and so on. So in 51 years, she recorded an astonishing 2,000 events, including 1,089 birthdays, 235 wedding cakes, 150 confirmations, 246 graduations, and 253 anniversaries, and on and on and on. She made roller posts, Abelskiever, Danish Kringle, and green tomato pie. And then she sold her donuts in the hatchery. She was self-taught and became proficient at typing and researched a program of the different crosses that she shared many times with the church groups. She sewed, she knitted, crocheted, embroidered, and learned the very difficult Danish stitch. And then she gifted all of us with her talents. It was in 1996 that she was still taking her handiwork to the county fair, winning ribbons galore. And it was then that she was honored for all of her accomplishments as one of the outstanding Lincoln County seniors. Well, her laugh was contagious, and she had the ability to laugh at herself, saying, I'm perfect. Well, why was tradition so important to her? I was keeping and repairing decorations year after year, never forgetting a holiday, the food, the stories, and the songs. And why were the victories and never the failures of the children shared? Why was she so stubborn about her beliefs, friendships, relatives, and family? And why was her silence sometimes louder than we could bear? How did she keep her feelings and thoughts private 
even to the family during the most difficult days. Well, maybe because the family was always more important than she herself. Even as she cared for her parents during their later years, she was always there. She survived a miracle operation in 1983 at the age of 70. And then she lost her best friend when dad died in 1992. And then her baby boy Lewis passed away in 1993. So they are all together now at the Hope Cemetery in Tyler, Minnesota. She had lost her first child and then gained three boys and a girl and has left the world now with seven grandchildren and 11 great-grandchildren. In her last days, she continued to look forward to the day when she could come home to Tyler, to her home, her flowers, her memories, friends, and her church, to touch them just one more time. She never ever forgot a name and she never complained of pain. So after attending her grandson's wedding in California at 84 years old, mom closed her eyes and went to sleep, letting life take its course with a small smile at the end to acknowledge that all was well, that it was time and peace was at hand. It is because of my mother and her need to hang on to our letters, pictures, report cards, and boxes of memories that we now have almost 7,000 pages for our family legacy. Because of her, we have a family tree that numbers over 2,300 people. And it's because of her that we are able to provide the still photos for these mini movies of the people in our family. I don't think she envisioned the size and scope of our legacy, but we know there was a reason for us to find memories in the attic, the basement, the rafters, and every corner of the canasta room and every other nook and corner in her home. My hometown will never be the same again. The house I was raised in is empty. Main Street off of Highway 14 is now silent and the pew in the church is empty. The senior Scrabble Club has one less and the birds in the backyard are now gone. The Danish Nissemen no longer protects. Gone is the sweet smell of donuts. Gone is the creative talent she shared with all. The Norwegian blue paint on the house is dim and the collection of spoons are no longer polished. The guest book at the front door is now closed. The attic is bare, the basement is empty, and the garage is cold. The sound is now silence. But our essence is our survival. Thank you, Mom for giving us your legacy.
This is one I got for my birthday. Black Hills Gold. And the crosses I got when I was doing my cross program. And this one I got at the Sioux Falls Airport. I looked at it for a couple years. And then we went down there and took some people down. They were going to Arizona. When they come back, we were going to pick them up. I looked at it again. <laughs> I thought, I better get it. I this like it. This one is the family ring. It's my five children. I only have four, but I have Roger. Odile, David, and Lewis. This was the first one. That was November. Each month is a different color. And in the center, in the sunshine, they've got a little cross. A little white cross. Oh. When it's in the sun. Could it just go over there in the sun and you see? You're not making it up. No. Mm. <laughs> I never knew that. You want to see your bad fingers on the film? Tell what a bad girl you were. This one really hurts. This one isn't too bad. This this is gonna explode pretty soon. This little piggy went home. <laughs> this little piggy got none. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't open the steaming hot pot. These three, we three, Amy, Meenie, and Mo. 